Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. A while ago, I made a video called Jazz Practice Routine, a tune a week, which is the method that I came up with a long time ago to get better, just for learning tunes, for learning how to comp with your left hand, how to comp with both hands, how to uh, play in different keys, how to solo, all these things. One of my subscribers named Ya left a great comment asking me if I would kind of demonstrate or like put my money where my mouth is on this tune a week practice routine. I thought that was a really good idea. And the tune that I've chosen is Autumn Serenade. I've heard it over the years on the Johnny Hartman and John Coltrane album, and I've decided it's a great one for me to explore. So I'm gonna tell you all of the things that I've done to learn this tune better and up my game. Monday, you're supposed to listen to as many recordings as you can. So I listened to a whole bunch of recordings of Autumn Serenade, and I, I listened to Harry James, someone named Dave King that I need to look up, because the recording of his, he's a piano player, I think, is really awesome. Uh, Meredith D'Ambrosio, George Shearing, Kurt Elling. Those are the ones that I kind of latched on to. And then the next step is to learn the melody and to learn the words. So I've done that. The way that I learned the melody was by listening to all of these recordings, also looking at my real book that I have open here right in front of me, and looking up on the internet different sources of sheet music that I could find. I still have a question about the melody. There's a change at the end that I heard on the Harry James recording, and I'm not sure if it's if it was the original intent of Peter DeRose or not. So I've written to my friend Ken Pluplowski because he's really good at knowing the origins of melodies and the original compositions and like the way the melody is supposed to be played. But I haven't heard back from him yet. Little update. I have heard back from Ken Pluplowski and he told me that at the end of the tune, it's the sharp five. That's the thing I was wondering about. If, because the Harry James recording plays a G instead of an F sharp. Anyway, if you're curious, it's like the fifth note from the end of the melody. You can go check it out. But Ken figured out for me that the sharp five was the original note in the melody. But the melody to this song is really cool. And it goes. Isn't that nice? It's kind of haunting. And and the words I will say while I look at you right here, and I'll play the chords so that I have to prove that I have them memorized. Through the trees comes autumn with its serenade. Melodies, the sweetest music ever played. Autumn kisses, that's hard for me to remember, but Autumn kisses we knew. Then I remember that new rhymes with bu coming up. Autumn kisses we knew are beautiful souvenirs. And then when I see souvenirs in my head, I, I have like some idea of postcards and, and stuff, but with leaves on them because that's what we're talking about. And then and then I imagine dog paws because the word pause is coming up. Sometimes I do those kind of things to help me remember the words. As I pause to recall the leaves seem to fall like tears. Sometimes if you can just get the first part of a lyric, the rest of it just comes as long as you've listened a bunch. Then after tears, I try to think of stars, like the tears fall and they turn into stars. Silver stars were clinging to an autumn sky. Love was ours until October passed us by. No, wandered by. I make that mistake sometimes. Let the years come and go. I still feel the glow that time cannot fade. And the next step is to play roots with your left hand, thirds and sevens with your right, 
and sing the melody and do it in all the keys. I'm gonna bring the camera over to the piano so you can see my roots and thirds and sevens. And I won't take you through every key, but we'll go through a lot of them. All right, my thirds and sevens are a little bit weird in this song because the first chord is a minor chord with a major seven. So like this, E flat minor, major seven. And the thing that I've decided about it after listening to a whole lot of recordings is that I want to add the six almost always. Most of the players do that. So when I play thirds and sevens, this, this is my third and seven, but I'm gonna add the six every time just to remind me that that's what I want to do in the future. We have this E flat minor major seven chord. That's the first one. And there's the third on the bottom and the seven is in there. And now we're gonna change to a B flat seven. So I'm gonna do the quickest change I can. And there is my third and seven. And then we're gonna go back. And then we're gonna go to an A flat 13. So right there, I got the seven on the bottom again. Now I'm changing to an F minor, and it's there, B flat seven, E flat major. I'm gonna go here for my G half diminished chord, and then here for C seven, and then back to F minor. All right, so that's the main substance. I'm just gonna be doing things like that. I'm singing the melody, I'm singing the words. Through the trees comes autumn with her serenade. I might give a little groove with like this. Melodies, the sweetest music ever played. Autumn kisses we knew are beautiful souvenirs. As I pause to recall, the leaves seem to fall like tears. Stars were clinging to an autumn sky. Love was ours until October wandered by. Let the years come and go. I still feel the glow that time cannot fade. I'm just gonna go, let's see, I'll just go up, up a half step. So instead of there, I'll go through, uh, maybe I should play a B7 chord to get me set. Through the trees comes autumn with her serenade. Melodies, the sweetest music ever played. And, you know, I can tell you here, too, that I have these little tricks. On kisses, I know that it goes to the two chord. So I kind of, like the two chord if I'm thinking in the minor key. Um, so here it's E minor. The two chord's going to be an F sharp minor chord. And the way I remember that is I think about two kisses, because it happens right on kisses. So sometimes I have these little tricks. Love was ours until October wandered by. Years is the same as kisses. Let the years come and go. So the two chord, and this is a five. I'll still feel the glow. And then this goes to the three. So it's like a two, five, three, six, which is really common. And then the six turns into the new two. So I've got that in my head. Still feel the glow, the time cannot fade. It turns into the two when I hear. And this is a, a quick two, five. That lovely. Then what I think about is I have to go right back to where the two was and drop it a half step. So it's going to be C7 autumn, and drop it another half step. Serenade. There we go. That was hard to remember. So I'm going to do the rest of the keys. The next thing to do on day three is to create beautiful two hand rootless comping or voicings. So I'm gonna go back to the original key. And here I'm gonna look at what happened on the recordings that I listened to. So Harry James plays it in C minor. Um, 
which is no problem for me because I've already practiced it in all 12 keys, right? And the horns do a cool thing where they voice, um, they, they do these little arpeggios like this. Like that. They play these notes, the fifth, the minor third, the six, and the nine. And, and then they do that the first time. Uh, and then the piano goes. And then this time they go down to the root. And the piano again. So I really learned from that about just, I just thought that was a really neat sound. Just those notes in that order. It's the five and the flat three and the six and the nine. And the thing that Harry James did that I thought was cool was they just let the horn player take care of that major seven note on the on the minor major seven chord and the horns didn't even, didn't even play it. And I've noticed that other pianists don't even play the that note either, the, the major seven. They, they play the six instead and let the melody take care of that that color note. So I'm going to I'm going to take that cue most of the time when I make up my voicings. I really do like this. And and because the the piano plays that, I think it's the piano in the Harry James recording, that tells me that the 11 is okay to play on this chord. So uh, let's go back to E flat minor. And there's our 11. It's a great sound, isn't it? And there's the six. Now, I don't like them all together, you know, that much, maybe once in a while. But here's, here's our sound with the nine and the six. And, and I'm going to leave out that major seven for now and add the fifth. So I like that for a two-handed voicing. Um, I also kind of want to hear what it sounds like to put the nine on the bottom. Maybe that... And then I'm leaving out the fifth, so I might add it there. That's not bad. But it sounds a little empty in here, so I might add the 11. I don't know. That's not, that's not such a great one for all the time. What if instead I treat it just like it's an A-flat 13 chord, but I take a little cue from what happens on... Where did I hear it? Oh, it's on the Kurt Elling recording that I listened to. The piano player does this kind of thing, but they plane. So that's one idea for playing two-handed comping voicings. I can take a cue from Kurt Elling's pianist, whoever that was, and do some planing. There, there was also some planing on the George Shearing recording, and I have written down that George Shearing um, also uses thirds on the minor major seven chords. So, and that he starts on the flat third, so here with the fifth, and then the four and the six, and then the five and the plus seven. So this kind of sound. I like that too. So I'm gonna keep all of that in mind as I come up with my voicings. But, but the thing to do this time is to come up with a really super solid voicing on this tricky chord, and I'm gonna play it every time so that it becomes a habit for me. So right now is not the time to really mess around with the, the planing or the um, whole tone kind of thirds playing, that planing that George Shearing did, but it's, it's kind of time for me to pick one thing and stick with it. This one will be my main go-to. And, I, and I'll remember that it looks like, you know, the a fourth away, it looks like that dominant voicing that I play all the time. But sometimes I might, I might do that instead. Okay, that's my plan. Then I need a voicing for the B flat seven sharp nine sharp five chord. And maybe I'll use this one. Yeah, I want to be careful with that one because the melody has a regular nine in it. So I don't want to play the sharp nine while the melody is being held. I don't want to do da because there's that crunch. So I'm going to make sure I let go of the melody with my voice. Da da, and, and even you know. It, it says in the music to play that sharp nine, but I don't think it's a good idea. I think I need to play the regular nine. So I'll do that, and I'll go back. There we go. And here, 
this is the chord that I'm kind of already playing, this A flat 13, but I'm gonna add the sharp 11 because it's a nice sound and I like it. And mo most of the players that I listened to did it. Also, I want it to be known that E flat melodic minor is just something that gets played by everybody. Especially this whole tone part of it. So I'm gonna try to always have that in my head. A lot to think about. All right, so we have this one. Autumn's kisses we knew. I'm gonna go ahead and do that one. We're beautiful souvenirs. These are just pretty regular voicings. I'll hop down to the C minor. As I pause her call. This, this one's pretty uh, standard. I might add the, um, I might add the 11 in there. And also, you should write these down. For me, I think I can remember them, but, but I think it's a great idea to write them down so that you, you're not guessing every time. Call the leaves seem to fall. That's the melody note, but it doesn't sound good if I double it, so I'm probably gonna do this flat nine, sharp nine thing with the third, always the third and seven on the bottom, almost always for me. Leaves seem to fall like tears. And I'll probably do this one. Silver stars were clinging to an autumn sky. There we go. Love was ours. Maybe a little plating until October wandered by. I can keep the same one. Why? Because the bass changes. Let the years come and go. I still feel the glow that time cannot fade. When I here I gotta think a little bit. I'll probably just play the um, the melody note, which is the fifth of this B9 chord, and then keep it this way. I keep the um, the note from the last chord. It becomes the sharp five, and I also have the melody note right here, and the third and seven again. that one. All right, there are my chords. Now, first thing is I have to put on a play along track. I'm all set up to do that. The Autumn Serenade does not come in the iReal Pro. It doesn't come in the regular playlist, you know, the jazz, whatever it's called, 2400. So I had to look it up. When you need to look up anything, um, you go to forums, that's what I do. And then there's actually, where is it? There's a search bar that you can use. Um, and I just typed Autumn Serenade, and then it came up, and I, I just downloaded it. It wasn't that hard. So now it's in my songs. I've got it, and I can put it on a play-along. I've got a little speaker hooked up. That's my normal setup. So I'm going to take the metronome down to like 80 beats per minute, make sure I can play all of these, and then I'm going to do it in every key. So the next thing to do is to move it to your next key. In this case, let's say B flat minor. Then I need to figure out all of my chords in the next key. So here I go. I won't put you through the whole thing, but I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna probably put the seven on the bottom in this case, and, and I'm not using the seven, uh, so I have to think about E flat, um, like a E flat. There we go. So that's my B flat minor chord, right? And I can do that. And what, what are my planning notes? I had the, uh, yeah, so it's, it looks a little different here. And here I go. Next chord. All the way through rootless voicings your beautiful rootless voicings, every key. Now, if you've got, you know, Finale or Sibelius and you have written these out, it's easy for you to just print them and play them in every key, reading them, and that's okay. But 
it's really worth the effort for your brain to have to figure these out in every key. And you can do this all day Tuesday, you know, and break it up into little sections because it's not easy. Wednesday, you're supposed to figure out your rootless voicings for your left hand. So these are usually four note rootless voicings. Probably is going to look like that. Maybe, maybe this one's going to look just like my right hand, almost like my right hand one did, except oftentimes in open and closed voicings, you, you do take that second note from the bottom and put it on the top. I have videos about this. Just look for open and closed voicings in my name, but we'll put it ba back down on the bottom. So there's our first one and I'm going to play the melody. Next voicing probably here. get all of those. figure that one out. The B, B7, that's trickier for me to remember. I mean, I guess I could play it like I always do, which is there. That sounds pretty good. I'll probably do that for my B, B9 chord, just like I, I normally play a B9. Take everything down a half step. End it. Now I go to the next key. This time, let's do D minor. I'll go down through the keys this time instead of going up chromatically, so. Uh, On the next day, Thursday, it's time to totally have this song memorized. You should have it memorized by now and be able to play it in any key from memory. Now it's time to start soloing. And the way that I like to start soloing is to take a pattern and play it through every single chord. And to do that with a play along, probably, you, you could go back to roots, maybe play in, uh, I'm gonna start in C minor right now. I like to switch up where I start orient myself a little bit. All right. And then I just have to pick a pattern. So I can tell myself that every time the chord takes up a full bar, which is almost every, every chord until we get to the very end, I'm going to play a pattern that goes, um, like that. One, three, two, four, three, five, four, two, three. I'm going to do that on every single chord. I'm going to put on my play along and I'm going to probably go a little faster for this. I think I can go a little faster. I'll go up to 120. move on to the next key. 
the magic of this step is that you burn the chords into your brain. You, you get used to hopping from key to key and to remembering what chord comes next as you solo. A great step after this, although it's not in my list, is to put your left hand at least thirds and sevens in while you do this. So, um, and take it through maybe just four or five keys like this. And then now you guys, it's time, it's time to start performing. It's time to start thinking about an intro. Listen to all the intros that you heard. See if there's one that you particularly like. John, John Coltrane Quartet does. That's a nice one. And just start to kind of play around with how you might actually go about performing this tune from start to finish. Then after I've taken the, taken the song through every key, you know, for quite, quite a few different of the different parts of these exercises. Now I'll probably just focus on the key that I'm going to settle in for me, which I think is C minor. So now when I practice my arrangement, I'm actually just going to practice in the key that I'm going to always do it in and just go from there, make an arrangement, practice my soloing. And I'll tell you what, after all of this, this tune has sunk in and well, I'm known, I don't want to say I'm never going to forget it because I will. If I don't visit it soon, I'll forget it. But day after day, I've been going through Sunday is my day for you to rest. Take a break from this tune because on Monday, you need to come right back to it and make sure you can do, do it still. trees comes autumn with her serenade melodies the sweetest music ever played autumn kisses we knew our beautiful souvenirs as I pause to recall the leaves seem to fall like tears Silver stars were clinging to an autumn sky. Love was ours until October wandered by. Let the years come and go, I still feel the glow that time cannot fade. When I hear that lovely autumn serenade. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Kind of crazy, but super fulfilling. It feels so good every time I do this. I just, I can't recommend it enough. And if you go back to the video where I made this, if you click the card above my head, you can see the poster that I made with the layout of every single day, what you're supposed to do. You can, if you want to, you can click the link and go to my website and buy a poster for $2.50, I think. But you can also just screenshot it from the video. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.